So I actually paused the video for a bit there uh, until I got back to this point, and then I tried again. Must have been nothing. And, uh, so this level, right? So as I said, I, I don't know if there will be another video up on Monday or not, but in theory there should be. I know my update schedule is already highly irregular, uh, and I'm not sure how university will affect that. It actually might make it more regular because I'll have some kind of routine anyway, and I'll just be able to slot this in there. Uh, but hopefully I'll also have a job uh, soon, so, you know, I'd end up being quite busy. Anyway, uh, this level, CIA headquarters, by the way, I didn't record all of this yet, uh, this entire level, because it's quite a long level, and and one that I seem to recall being very difficult. Uh, you might notice you don't actually... I don't have a gun at this stage, any kind of weapon. Uh, so, like things like this camera, I have to sneak past it. Uh, there's also a limit on the number of alarms you're allowed to sound, and I'm not allowed to kill any government employees anyway. I, I do believe you find a gun later in the level, but you can't really use it so good, or you fail the mission for shooting government employees, uh, which is bad. Just here to gather intelligence, not here to to kill dudes or anything. And I remember just hating this level when when I was playing through this game back when it came out in 2001, 2002, or something. And I was I was but a wee boy. I think I didn't play it until a few years after it came out. But but you know whatever. That's that's not the point. I remember hating this level. So I did not uh, endeavor to record the entire thing all in one go because it probably would have driven me to insanity and been much longer than people really want to have of me in a given week anyway. I was being really careful here because because this guy up the top saw me last time and I think uh, I think it's a really cheap place to put somebody in a lot of ways because y you'd never think that there'd be a guy up there, but there is. You go up the stairs, and he's behind you, and he sees you, and then you fail. It's just not, it's just not cool. It's just not cool. And see, like, there, my character has no way of seeing him. But I can, because I can look behind myself. And that's the only reason I'm, I'm not completely screwed. I think I knocked this guy out. I don't, uh, I don't actually remember exactly what happens, because, as, as I said, I recorded this about a week ago. I think I'm gonna try and use less night vision in later videos because it makes the game a lot easier to play, but but probably not so interesting to look at. Uh, it is very very dark in the CIA for s some reason, even though it's obviously during the working day because there's a lot of people around and some of them are just doing regular sort of work. It's kind of weird. Um, I'm not gonna read this out because I don't think I'd leave it open, but you can read it to yourself. You can read it to yourself. Uh, I was planning to do... I don't know if I've mentioned this before in any of my other videos, but I know I talked about it when I originally recorded this, is... Um, I'm planning to do some stuff of newer games. Like, I know uh, both of my Let's Plays so far have been an older game and just a single-player game, but I'm kind of interested in the commentary scene, like the gameplay commentary scene. Uh, especially for Call of Duty, just because that's where the largest scene is. Like, I, I really like watching um, Blame Truth and and uh, I Pawn Star for Hire, and uh, Scene Hunters is a hilarious guy. Um, and I want to get involved in that, but I don't currently have any way to record footage from my PS3, and I'd rather do PC games anyway, because I feel like um, on in YouTube, people playing any game, any given game, on the PC are really underrepresented like uh, I don't know of any really big name commentators who play on the PC which is a damn shame because I think uh I don't know maybe it's sort of a bit fanboyish or, or PC master racist ra racist race ish of me to say this but I really think that if you are a hardcore gamer and you're really into the gaming scene there's just no substitute for playing the game on a PC for a lot of reasons that I'm not going to get into right now, and I, and I don't want to start a huge debate about this. Um, I will say, I, I think it's fine if you personally prefer a different console. That's absolutely fine. There are 
plenty of valid reasons to prefer an Xbox or a PS3 or whatever you like over the PC for playing games. But for me, I always feel like if you're part of the really hardcore crowd and you're really into video games, and, and I realize a lot of these commentators are more casual players anyway, um, but if you're really into video games, I think there's really no substitute for a good gaming rig. Um, so I'll be doing gameplay commentaries on PC when these games come out for games like Brink and Homefront and Duke Nukem Forever and Crisis 2 uh, on my on my new PC that I should be ordering uh, sometime towards the end of this month, which I'm I'm really looking forward to. If if everything goes to plan, that'll happen. I mean, it's not it's not a sure thing, but but it would make me happy if that did occur. Uh, and I'll be trying to get more involved in the gameplay commentary thing. So talking about those games multiplayer, giving you guys some tips. Uh, I'm not I'm not like a really pro dude when it comes to online FPSs. Although I've been playing, I think this guy, I think I get fucked up here. Yeah, yeah, this is this is gonna be bad, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is bad. This is very, very bad. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, I don't claim to be a super pro dude or anything of that nature when it comes to playing online first-person shooters. However, however, I'm not bad, and it was sort of, it's sort of like this. I understand the basic theory behind being a good player, it's just... I don't always apply it. I have, I'll have days where I'm really good, and I'll have days where I'm really bad, and most people only upload their really good days, like most commentators. Like, and I mean, I can run uh, occasionally. I do run the kind of ratios that you see commentators putting up. Like, I can run a, a game at you know 36 and 8. I can do that kind of thing, or um, on on the rare occasion, I might be able to get like one of those games in a day if I play a lot a day or, or maybe a couple if I'm having a really good day but then other days I'll just be doing terrible like like ratios of like 0 0.3 0 0.5 all day and I, I don't know why that is I'm just I'm a really inconsistent gamer um, but anyway I'll probably try and upload like a good mix of stuff because I notice most commentators only upload good gameplays, games where they play really well, with, with like a few notable exceptions, but I don't think that that commentary on YouTube is necessarily about being a really good player. It can be, uh, if your thing is to give people tips about playing the game, you obviously want to show them good gameplay, where you are, you know, applying these, these good strategies that you tell people about. Uh, good strategies such as not running directly up to a dude in the CIA and getting shot by an MP5 like a dozen times. But it's more important to just be entertaining, and I think when I watch a commentary, I'm not really watching it for the gameplay. I'm mostly just listening to the commentary, and the gameplay is just sort of something to look at at the same time. Um, it's it's all about the entertainment for me, not necessarily watching really late dudes, although that can be fun too. So I'll probably upload a mix of games. Like I'll upload games where I play really well, and I'll give tips on how to improve your game. Uh, that kind of thing, and I'll probably upload videos where I don't play so well, but you know, if there's just something else I want to talk about, or if a game made me really mad and I think it might be funny to watch me get my ass kicked horribly, uh, you know, I might upload a video like that. So what I'm, I'm trying to say is I want to be more diverse and more versatile, and also uploading a lot of different games. Uh, it's interesting to me lately with like demos of Crisis 2 and Killzone 3 and stuff like that coming out. Uh, a lot of YouTube commentators have tried those demos of those games and said like, Wow, I, I really want to try this game out. I've never really played a game much other than Call of Duty. I'm not going to say a lot of commentators, but a few commentators I've heard saying stuff like this. And that's really interesting to me because um, I always assumed that if you're commentating games on YouTube, you're probably like a really hardcore dude and you've been in the scene for a long time and you really know, know your shit, but... When I when I hear about people who got started playing game playing Call of Duty 4, say, is the first video game that they really played like a lot, I always think like, how does that even happen? Because to me, Call of Duty 4 was like a game for hardcore gamers, and Call of Duty 1 and 2, hardly anybody has played as many those compared to how many people have played COD 4 and later titles. And I wonder why that is. 
uh, because COD 1 and 2 were actually my favorite games in the series. Uh, unequivocally, absolutely amazing games. Uh, Call of Duty 4, still very good. Uh, after that, the series sort of went downhill pretty quickly. Although, Black Ops is sort of a step in the right direction. Uh, I, I gave it a very positive multiplayer review. I have to say, I found that it hasn't had that great staying power. It's much better balanced than MW2, and it gets rid of a lot of the just stupid, stupid shit in that game. But, it's just not that fun. It's not as much fun as MW2 was, partially because of all the stupid crap you could do in that game, and it's not as much fun as Call of Duty 4 was, because uh, when Call of Duty 4 came out, it was all fresh and interesting and new and exciting, and it's just not anymore. Also, uh, I think most of the maps in Black Ops are pretty rubbish. Uh, you know, average at best is, is the kind of thing. I, I just I don't like the maps in that game. Anyway... I always sort of wonder how it is that people have become so quickly uh, such centerpieces of the gaming community as a whole when they don't have... I, I don't know if this is going to come off as pretentious or what, but I have a lot of history with the medium, I think. I've been playing video games uh, for well over half my life. I remember, you know, I remember playing the Half-Life Uplink demo back in 1998. Uh, my, my parents would not, of course, buy me the real game when I was eight years old, which is a perfectly appropriate decision, I think. Half-Life is a very dark and violent game, an incredibly awesome game, but, you know, I played the demo. I downloaded a lot of demos for games that they would never have bought me and played them behind my ba their backs. I'm pretty sure they know, but, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, I remember uh, being so excited for Deus Ex to come out back in 2000. I still think Deus Ex is one of, if not the greatest it is absolutely one of the greatest games ever made. If if you're new to gaming, if you've only played Call of Duty before, whatever, go on Steam and buy Deus Ex and play that game. And I don't even know if you'll like it. It's such a different experience from what games are like now. I don't know if somebody who is only familiar with Call of Duty games would even be able to get into it, because it's not... Here's the thing. Uh, oh, right, loading screen.